<laughs> Man, I tell you what, I love my job. Uh, I woke up today, it was 15 degrees. I hopped on a plane, left my uh, Southern Michigan home, came over here to Salt Lake City, and later in the same afternoon, I don't even gotta wear a boots or coat, and I get to touch some of this cool, fun stuff we've never been able to have on this channel before. Stay tuned, if you're not familiar with Northwoods RV, this is one rugged son of a gun, son. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV again today in Salt Lake City taking a look at a Northwoods Nash. This is their 24B, uh, smaller of their two bunkhouse models. And like I said, uh, if what you're looking for is just built to last, you know what this thing is? It's not an alligator, it's a crocodile. And here's why I say that. A lot like an alligator, not a lot has changed on these over the years. There have been some construction updates that we're going to highlight as we go through this. But if you look at this, it's a very classic floor plan. It has a lot of classic touches and features. There's some modern elements where they're really appropriate. But they found what worked. They didn't have the need to evolve. It just kept working like an alligator. But the reason I say it's a crocodile is unlike an alligator, that'll see you later after a while, this will still be a crocodile. <laughs> what I'm saying in a stupid sort of way that I don't know if that dumb joke landed it is built to last. One of the cool things with Northwoods, they build their own chassis in-house. They don't have a chassis supplier. Like they control every aspect of their build and their quality control. So when there's a problem, they can uh, address it in-house. They can manage it. And it's not to say that through the history of this company, they haven't had mistakes and they haven't been without sin, but they've uh, continued to improve in that regard. They've made sure that this thing is solid. It holds together. The insulation package on these is fantastic. And I really respect the fact that they don't play this inflated R value equivalent kind of nonsense game. They just say, look, here's what we build. It tests really well when it's hot and cold. Uh, it, it gets the job done really well. Um, now, what we're looking at today has some optional things like uh, if you're down with OTG, yeah, you know me, you're going to like the off the grid package that we're looking at here. Um, there's a couple little things on this I really respect. There's a couple little things I look at and go, hmm, really? But that's the reason we carry all these different RVs and that's why I put these videos out together. So this is my very first Northwood RV and I w I'm really curious to know what do you guys think about this and I will try to get a couple more of these in, in the, the Nash and the Arctic Fox series. And you tell me, are they something that you'd like to continue to see on this channel? I always let you guys make that choice. Let's get inside. Now, there's just certain RVs that the moment you step inside, you can just, you can feel it. You can just feel that there's something a little bit different going on here. You know, you look at it visibly, nothing really looks any different, but you can feel like this more solid quality coming out of it. And that's what you're going to see here. Now, there's a lot of aspects on this that maybe aren't the most popular in the, the current climate of the RV marketplace. But the thing is, again, this is built solid. This is built rugged. There's a lot of very classic aspects in this that maybe just because I kind of grew up camping, there's a lot of things in this that almost take me back to the old Fleetwood RV days. It's just built like a truck. Um, so first of all, we've got a six and a half foot sidewall, but you see that it does vault up. So the ceiling height in this will be very similar to something like a, a Cougar or a Bullet or uh, something like that, just to give you a reference point. Now, um, the, the slide box, basically, everything's built to a little bit thicker standard, and you can actually almost kind of see that by just looking at the slide floor right here. Now, the fact that this slide out uh, is above the uh, the floor, it's a Schwintech slide, means that they don't have to punch a, uh, a hole through the, uh, the chassis frame rail, meaning it's one less point for like, mice and critters and heat and cold to sleep through. I do think a lot of people would prefer that to be uh, carpetless, but it's not. It, that's just one of those things. Let me address something else. This is an RV that is made for hot and cold camping. So they have gone and stuck with the classic floor heating because that is a more effective heating system. If you don't like that, if you're not camping when it's super cold, you can easily just throw something over those to cover those up. So kind of keep little stuff like that in mind. Uh, the uh, the woodwork in here, our, our cabinetry is all uh, a, a real wood cabinet. It does have a sticker wrap. Um, so just little things like that kind of keep in mind. But as I uh, pivot my way around here, one of the things that just kind of caught me on this is like the fit and finish on everything is really stellar. And I don't even know how well that translates to camera. But 
the moment I stepped inside this, and admittedly, this is only my first Northwood I've ever personally had a chance to walk into in the new RV world, and pardon my coat over there. It, like I said, it got warmer today than where I came from, so I was sweating to the oldies like Richard. <gasps> Be still my heart and clutch my pearls? Is somebody actually doing a side splash? Oh my gosh! You know how many RVs I whine about that in? And here they are doing it. That is awesome. Um, as long as I'm looking at the kitchen, I'm also noticing like there's not a lot of real sharp edges. Everything has nice intention. Everything has nice radius to it. I'm, look at the thickness on that sink cover, Batman. Oh my gosh. All right. By the way, this is not warped. I realize on the camera angles, this looks really wacky. It is curved intentionally right there. If I'm going to be, I mean, I'm having to go out of my way to be stupidly picky. I would love a little toe kick right there so you could really belly right up to that stainless sink, but neither here nor there. It's interesting to me, too, they're using a surface-mounted sink when you have the sealed edge uh, laminate countertop here, but hey, neither here nor there. Um, as long as we're talking about the kitchen stuff, that's a two-way refrigerator. That is, I think they call it a seven cubic foot. That's all they offer in these. They don't do 12 volt refrigerators because so many of these are made with that West Coast off grid camping intention in mind. I, maybe because I'm a Midwestern boy. Ooh, look at that big fan. Yeah, baby. But maybe because I'm a Midwestern boy, I love the option of having a 12 volt fridge. I can respect how the, the core consumer of this travel trailer definitely uh, wants that two way fridge, but. Um, I, I do think there are some folks out there who would like an option for 12 volt. Now, something I'm noticing here, the thickness of these bunks, they are down with the thickness. Ooh. <laughs> Anybody catch that reference? Anyway, that is like twice as thick as most. Rockwood and Jayco's are going to be awful similar right there. Separate curtains for the upper and lower bunks. A ladder so you don't have to throw out your rotator cuff. Um, I got a love-hate thing with this up here. Where that light is located, I have to crawl into the bed to reach it. I prefer as a parent to have the lights over here where I can reach them where he's, oh my Lord, that is not just cheap wall panel. That is, oh my gosh, that is like, oh my God, is that laminated? Holy crap, that's thick and strong. Oh, sorry, again, <laughs> squirrel. But uh, anyway, lights in the top and bottom bunks and both top and bottom bunks have their own storage. Now, what that means is that is not quite as big as some of the, quote, double bunks that you get from a lot of manufacturers. It's still, it'll be a solid, like, big kid bunk, as it were. Now, this bathroom, this is big boy, big girl, uh, extra large, hot pocket friendly. Check out the space around that toilet right there, porcelain foot flush. And as long as we're checking out the space and the sizings of things, I like that extra linen cabinet. I'll get you a look at that in just a second. Give me a moment here. But first, the headroom in the shower. Very similar again to like a cougar with the vaulted ceiling and the shower head is on the inside wall of the camper, meaning you're gaining maximum possible headroom over here uh, up in that shower as a result. Now, I suppose as long as I'm standing here, I like the gloss. It's not too shiny, but it doesn't look flat and cheap. You like it's real wood. Huh, crazy, right? <laughs> But just the space for some, uh, you know, roll up your, uh, your your towels, linens, anything like that. Uh, again, just like in the kitchen, you get the bigger, like, four-speed, multi-speed fans in here. Um, turn you around real slow in the bathroom. You can see you've got a full-on medicine cabinet there. And it's an oddly shaped bathroom countertop. But at the same time, I mean, it's it's getting the job done pretty awful nicely. There's some good space around that. What I'm going to do here for you now, I'm going to back up just to give you kind of a frame of reference, and then I want to start opening up all the storage right about now. Seriously, I just earned a whole new level of respect for this camper. When you actually get to see one, because visually the, the cabinetry it all looks the same as everything else. When you get to see one of these in person, you start manipulating the cabinetry, you start opening things up, you start pulling on those drawers, there is a smoothness in how everything opens because all the fasteners are lined up correctly. There's an extra thickness. There's a weight and a heft to the drawers. This, this thing is built and I'm impressed. 
So we're gonna come back to this pantry a little bit from the other direction, but let me first just give you a little look here. The, the full drawers, so you don't have to go crawling around on your hands and knees. And um, like I said, we'll come back to that, but notice how that pantry isn't as deep as the rest of the slide. There's a reason for that. Now this table, it brackets against the wall. So uh, it just basically pivots up and down. That's the same type of dinette table I used to sleep on in my grandparents' Sunnybrook fifth wheel. And you know what's wrong with it? Absolutely nothing. You know what I love about it? It is not a knee knocker. And I'm a big clumsy oaf flying out here next to, uh, you know, bossy McArmrest. That, that dude who thinks the, he just owns the armrest. Like he just owns the entire thing and his elbows jabbed into your side the entire time. That's... That was my experience this morning when I flew out here. And I mean, that's the life. But at the same time, you know, of a traveling RV nerd, but at the same time, um, suddenly having leg room around a seating area, I appreciate that. Now, that is cool. You can remove those. You can convert that into a closet. Again, this is a gas electric two-way only. So you want to make sure you kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you wanted something like 12 volt, there are conversion kits that you could apply to this, however. But there's a reason I don't know much about those. I'm an idiot. No. <laughs> uh, because we have parts and service people who specialize in that kind of thing. I have a lot of ideas in that regard. Not uh, training on every single nut, bolt, and widget out there. So apologies. Anyway, uh, I just want to give you ideas in case you're curious. We can get you more info. Larger 22-inch oven down there. By the way, this is a Furion. One of the cool things about that is if you turn the oven knob on, but you haven't started sparking, it doesn't pump gas into the RV. Unless something has changed, not every RV has that safety feature. That's a Furion thing. I like how they left this open and they didn't waste potential storage. At the same time, it does feel like maybe they could have condensed that down a little bit and given me a little bit more of a wastebasket space, but it's also not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and again, I'm telling you, if you get a chance to see one of these, put your hands on them. Like, look at the thickness of the drawers you remember when i said the bunks were down at the thickness that's nothing compared to these drawers and i was expecting a stupid sponge drawer i was not expecting a full-on drawer look at that that is just awesome i am so happy with so many things i've seen in this as i said the cabinetry it is all pocket screwed it is all wood cabinetry not mdf not particle board um it uh it is a sticker wrap however now, you might notice how that cabinet there is a little bit shallow. And how many RV manufacturers... This is that classic stuff I was telling you about. How many RV manufacturers have gotten rid of the Peninsula-style cabinet right here? And I get that it's kind of in her face a little bit, but it's storage you otherwise wouldn't have, you know? it To me, I think it's not a bad idea. Now, the entertainment center over here, like a lot of RV entertainment centers, flat screen TV, some storage above and below, kind of a mini pantry tainment down below. The... um. Let me give you a view. If you're going to be sitting... Ooh. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> These cushions are nice. At least, uh, again, nicer than the airline seats that I sat on on the way out here, which um, feel like they were made... Uh, like when you go to a high school football game and you sit on the bleachers for a while, and when you stand up, your body aged. 15 years without you realizing it until you stood up. That's what it's like when you get out of an airplane. This is not bad. Well, anyway, sorry. What I want to show you <laughs> is the view from the seat, basically. So now you have a reference point of where I'm at. And this is what you're looking at from there. Now, like a lot of smaller trailers like this, it doesn't have amazing campsite window coverage. Um, it does have kind of that, that window over there in the bunk where you can kind of peek out the door side a little bit, especially when the bathroom door is not left open, but neither here nor there. What I wanted to show you, because I mentioned it two or three times, is the depth of that cabinet, uh, well, what looks like a full depth cabinet versus the depth of like the second or third pantry over here. Because this thing for a small camper, if you're noticing, is some pretty serious storage. I love it. Um, it's not wasted, though, that, that lack of depth. It's actually accessible from the outside. And if I remember, we'll take a look at that out there. Now, somebody inside said something to me when I said, okay, you know, you are the folks. I I'm new to Northwood. So everything is like, wow, bright, shiny, and new to me. Although I'm trying to dial myself back. I've tried to be fair and point out a couple things that maybe aren't awesome or maybe something you may not love. Like the fact it's accordion 
curtain doors, not pocket doors. So kind of keep that in mind. This is a camp queen bed. I know that's going to be a, a sticking point for some folks, but hear me out. Look at this. It's like a, is that a double pillow top? That's a double pillow top mattress. It's not a throwaway mattress. Now it is a short queen, but look at that. So what I was getting is I asked one of the people who works in, inside every day, who lives here, and I was like, tell me your real, true, candid impression of these. They said, honestly, the way I feel about it, if you want to have a good idea of the quality of an RV, check out the quality of their mattress. And that statement hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, hmm, I like that. Now, when I first looked over here at the side stands, I went, really? No USB plugs? Log that in memory banks, though. Actually, you don't have to, because if you look up at their headboard, they've got USB plugs up there. Perfect headboard phone shelf. Nailed it. I wanted to give you a look at the storage in here. Oh, my gosh. I just... It's not even just a big vent fan in the bathroom or the kitchen. It's the kitchen and the bathroom and the bedroom. Holy crap, that is awesome. That is just awesome. Um, so I opened up the, the bedside closets there and I was like, oh, it's a dresser. Um, it's cool that it has the dresser drawers down below, but I was like, wait a minute, where's my hanging storage? And then when I got a little better look at them over here, what I realized is that they let you pick your own adventure. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Pardon me. <clears throat> but what I was getting at, they let you pick your own adventure. Just like that pantry, just like everything else, you want to take those out. You want to have hanging storage. You got it. I am so impressed with this. Like I said, there's a couple classic features that maybe aren't on trend with what people are looking for today. But I understand why they're doing it. I understand what they're doing. I, I'm very impressed with the overall thing. Like, look at this. Again, if you look where a manufacturer doesn't want you to look, like when you see real plywood and you see not just like two scrap sheets that they threw together under here that they cut off of something else, but something actually purpose-built, purpose-intended cut just for that right there, that is such an indicator of a higher quality product that's going to hold together better. By the way, if uh, you like you live in the East or the Midwest or whatever, and you want to get one of these, we can fulfill that through one of our sister stores. So just because we don't happen to have one in Michigan or Iowa or whatever, doesn't mean we can't get you one. Call your closest uh, Bish's RV store, get our team on the case, we can get one shipped out to you basically, or uh, brought to one of our closer stores where you'd have a chance where we can you know go through it, show you through it, all that kind of stuff. Now, something I was a little curious about when I looked at this one, because, you know, like, everything's big. Like, they have the slide-out sticks in a little further because it's built a little thicker kind of situation. I was wondering what the road mode accessibility was going to look like on this one. And what I found here is you are, without a doubt, doing a sideways travel trailer two-step to get through it. But what I also found out is the way this table brackets to the wall... You don't have to monkey with it if you want to put it away before you travel. And normally you don't want to walk on a slide out when it's retracted too awful much, but this thing is as rock solid as they come. So like I just did right there, you can do the sideways travel trailer two-step and a cowboy boogie. You can get back here. You can get to the bathroom. You can get to the bunks. You can get to all of your storage. You can get to your refrigerator, your front bedroom. This absolutely passes the travel stop test. Man, compared to... <laughs> the freezing weather back home. This is such a treat. It's such a treat. It's what's funny is it's only like 45 degrees, but compared to what I was used to, it's not even coat weather anymore. It's funny how your blood thickens up like that. Now, one of the first things I kind of noticed out here, I popped my head inside this baggage door. I like how it was nice and tall. I noticed that it actually had some extra space to the left in there, but then I noticed it did not pass all the way through. And I was like, what's up with that? And I found out. That's because she's generator prepped. And in fact, every single Nash uh, by Northwoods that we're looking at here is generator prepped. Now, uh, you see that simple little side mount solar prep plug. We're going to talk about solar in a couple different spots. Most of that we're going to talk about on the roof here. But keep in mind, it does have that portable prep plug there in case you want to get one of those little panels that you chase the sun with. And uh, I, I tell you what, 
in the past when I had seen Northwood RVs, they looked fairly plain Jane on the outside. They've given them some pretty smexy curb appeal. And you see the off the grid. Well, that is an optional package. It, it adds those little red accents. It changes a couple little things. You know, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, they have a beautiful store at this location. It is just, this facility is gorgeous. But anyway, sorry, I see something shiny. <laughs> Squirrel! Um, off the grid. It doesn't just give us red accents. It gives us these big, like, you know, off-road off Jeep-style Jeep floodlights, brother. So you can really light everything up right here, which actually, man, if you're hitching up at night, that would be cool. It includes this elevated tray, which you could use, I would say, for a generator, but it already has one, so a little cargo box. Uh, <laughs> Those are big propane tanks also. Those are not your father's like 20 pound propane tanks on this thing. Now, as we work our way around here, one of the things I wanna point out, um, Nash is, uh, I, I don't wanna, this sounds derogatory when I say it. It's like the little brother to an Arctic fox. Um, that That's not to say that it's like inferior, it's just that like Arctic fox goes further. So like they both have uh, fully laminated uh, sidewalls, fully walkable roofing, things like that. The uh, underbelly enclosed, heated again, they build their own chassis work. That's one of the things I really respect about them. They do a lot of their own construction stuff. But uh, Nash has a two inch sidewall, which is already uh, very uncommon within the industry. Then you factor in the idea that um, an Arctic Fox itself actually has, what is it, like a three inch sidewall? Something even bigger, something like that. Now this is another part of the OTG package. It gives you the like tire lift kit. But you know what I noticed was not just that. You know how rare it is to see travel trailers with the nicer shock dampening suspension packages here? It's so uncommon. And if you're going to be towing and going and if you're gonna do anything off just the common roads or if you're gonna be on the roads a lot, I don't know about you, where I come from the roads are always terrible. They're like, we're gonna charge you tax money to fix the roads and then that never happens. Anybody else have that experience? Anyway, but the little stone guard mud flap right there and uh, on this side of the rv it doesn't do a whole lot for me but on the other side it'll help protect your sewer stuff from getting smashed up now uh this does have a classic cargo bunk kind of feature right here and i'm telling you what like if you're like an e-bike enthusiast or I, I mean as big as this is as wide of the door and as deep as it is you've got some serious potential cargo space in here whether it's grills griddles you know, games, doesn't matter what. And uh, I think this is also part of the off the grid package. They all come with that handy little, uh, what is it, about a two foot by four foot folding picnic table. And I shoved it up in that corner so that you get to see how much space you actually have available in there. Now I wanna direct your attention up high. Uh, take a look at the awning. It might look a little bit different because kind of like some of the bigger luxury fifth wheels, it actually has a protective wrap around the base of the awning there. So the fabric itself is not actually exposed to weather. Now, if you're familiar with my videos, you know that I am not a fan of speakers being mounted up very high. I will say maybe I could tolerate it here just because this seems to be the kind of camper that people might use when they're not around everybody else. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you're just going to blow the neighbors away. Down here, of course, we got the propane cooker hooker right down there. Doesn't have an outside kitchen, but with that huge cargo bunk space, you want to bring yourself... Uh, so you could either bring a cooler and like a grill or a griddle, or you could get one of those like, um, you know, electric fridge freezer chest kind of things. Plug it in outside the RV, set up your grill. You've got the propane quick connect. You could build your own camp kitchen with one of these, which... Uh, I think is actually pretty darn cool. Um, the uh, windows are all tinted to help keep the weather out. Uh, man, I, there's a lot of things I want to cover on this. We're going to get up to the roof in a minute. Let me get back here past the hot and cold utility shower so you can uh, rinse the uh, lake smells off yourself before you jump into your RV and wallow around in it. But we got a 300 pound rated cargo accessory hitch on the back. And again, the underbelly in here. This is enclosed. This is heated. They do an excellent job of using that expanding uh, foam stuff to seal up any little like mouse house points. Um, and interestingly, tank heaters are actually optional across all of the entirety of the Northwood line, uh, which uh, it did surprise me a little bit to learn that. But at the same time, their base version is already passing hot cold camp standards extremely well. Now look at that luggage rack up top. We're gonna come back to that. Again, it's one of those classic features here that I think is very cool. Before we get up there though, I realized there's a little chunk of stuff here 
that I missed. And this is what I'm going to call an endoscopy storage compartment because uh, if you want to see the entire thing, it kind of looks like you're giving the camper uh, a lower GI scope because it goes all the way up to the ceiling. That can be a cool place for like fishing poles, maybe just a little campsite golf club or something like that. Uh, I don't know, what kind of random stuff would you put in there? Bag chairs would work well with that. Not to mention, you've got that uh, cargo bunk space over on the other side too. And I tell you what, uh, I've walked on a lot of RV roofing. This is very solid. This is very sturdy underfoot. I'm very happy with what I'm experiencing here. Now again, the classic feature. You used to see RVs, especially fifth wheels and motorhomes, all the time with some kind of like roof cargo luggage rack sort of situation. You never see stuff like that anymore. I saw that from the ground, I'm like, oh, no way. It just, it just kind of took me back. But what I want to show you, I'm going to spin you around like a record, baby, so just kind of be aware. I want to talk solar on these. So every single Northwood has a simple 45-watt solar battery tender that directs, uh, is wired directly to the battery so that when you have the disconnect turned off, it is keeping the battery topped off and alive for you. That's cool. Now, if all you want to run is a little bit of lights during the day, you're not going to do a lot of boondocking or anything like that. It'll be okay. I'm not going to tell you it'll be indefinite use, but it'll be okay. The off-the-grid package adds a, what is that, 175 watt? Because, yes, this is ZAMP. This is all ZAMP hardware. 175 watt roof panel uh, in addition to the 45 base. So do the math there, and you've actually got yourself a fairly respectable off-grid package, especially considering the fact that you've got a two-way refrigerator inside instead of a 12-volt fridge, so it's not heavily, uh, heavily? Yeah, there's that Midwestern dork in me. It's not eating the battery, guys. You know what I mean, right? But as that name implies, it's got the off-the-grid package. Not that every Nash necessarily does, but you, you know what's really funny about most RVs? They almost never have good lighting off the back of them. That's one of the things that I really like about that off the grid package. Somebody had a good idea, a little bright idea up there, a light bulb above their heads. You see what it, not, it's not very, it's not very uh, creative there. <laughs> so what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Like I said, um, there's a lot of aspects, especially inside this. They're not like flashy, fancy, over the top but they're rugged, they're solid, and they get the job done really well. And it's something that I think, I think personally, is gonna hold up very nicely. So if you, uh, you're kind of curious, check that link in the video description. You can see where we have one of these parts and what we're asking at any given point. Um, and feel free to give our Salt Lake City crew a hear or call. Uh, I, I wanna thank them for hosting me. And this is my first of about a whole week's worth of videos that I'm gonna be capturing. So if, this is, if you're watching these as they come out, stay tuned, guys. There's a lot of stuff at this store that you have never seen on this channel ever before, and I am really psyched to get it out there. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing like Steven Tyler, and take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.